Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 23rd, and today we're going to take a look at this frontal system moving into western Washington. You can see it impacting the Washington coast now. That'll slide through western Washington, western Oregon as we go on through the day today. Thursday and Friday, we might get one of those days uh, end up being a fairly nice day as this trough digs deep enough off the shore here. It might hold off precipitation until Saturday. So we might get a nice day out of that. And then looks like a weak atmospheric river moving through Saturday. Just a category one, no flooding expected. Then looks like the storm train is going to continue on in through next week with some thunderstorm potential even possible later on in through next week as we get some pretty good troughing over the area. Take a brief look around the rest of the country as well. And then we'll take a look at some temperatures we can expect. So here we're taking a look at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see the Gulf of Alaska here, British Columbia, Washington, Oregon. You see the weak frontal system moving through the Pacific Northwest today, bringing us our light rain. And this is only going to extend out to the higher terrain. It's going to miss eastern Washington and Oregon. But it is going to bring some rainfall to Puget Sound, Willamette Valley, and the Cascades. See the cold air that spilled out over the Gulf of Alaska here, uh, spawning a much deeper low out here. So this troughing out here is probably going to give us a dry day for Thursday before some precip starts to invade the area on Friday. And then it looks like another weak atmospheric river moving through the area Saturday and Sunday. Category one, no flooding expected or no major flooding anyway, but it's going to bring a couple rainy days Saturday and Sunday. It looks like for the Pacific Northwest kind of ruining the weekend weather wise there. Unless you like rainfall, that is. And then the systems are going to continue on in through next week, as we mentioned earlier. So checking out the rest of the country briefly here, you can see there is winter weather concerns for the Great Lakes in the northeast. There is a severe weather threat out east, so heads up if you have concerns along the east coast. Um, there is a tornado threat today out there, but it's not uh, supposed to be as significant as what happened the last two days over Louisiana and Texas. And yesterday, there was a pretty good tornado that moved right through New Orleans there. So check that out on Twitter if you want to see video. But the SPC has been doing a really good job this year. They picked up this severe weather event coming out seven, eight days in advance for eastern Texas. And then as it pushed off east into Louisiana and Mississippi. So great job by the SPC. You can see today's severe threat out here for the southeast and the east coast and up towards portions of Ohio and West Virginia. You see that tornado threat for the area there. So heads up if you have concerns out there. This is Spokane National Weather Service, Cocoa Rise. If you want to be a volunteer weather observer out there, you send in your data. Check out these areas circled. There's not many people out there. So if you are out there and you want to put in some observations and help out, uh, go to this, you know, Google Cocoa Rise and you can sign up to be a, a weather observer. You know, there's so many people on the west side that sign up for this. There's just not that many people over there comparatively. So this goes for Montana and Eastern Oregon too. They really need the observers out there, these volunteers. So this is last night's European run. And as we look into this, you can see that weak system moving through today. And then looks like tomorrow, a pretty dry day coming up. So enjoy tomorrow before some clouds and precip, very light move over the area of Friday. And then you can see kind of the atmospheric river setting up here as we go on into Saturday and Saturday night on into Sunday. You can see that precip just lingering over the area as category one atmospheric river impacts the region here. And that precip kind of hangs on. We don't get much of a break before a deep low slams in to Southeast Alaska, bringing us a strong frontal system on in through next week with some cold air behind it. And that could give us some thunderstorm potential across the Pacific Northwest here. So we'll watch out for that as a ridge kind of builds here, but we're in a cool north northerly flow behind that as a residual troughing moves down through the West. And you can see off into the extended another system over here of the Gulf of Alaska. So this might be just a transient ridge at this point. We'll watch that as we go into the extended. So here's what brought us our nice day yesterday. This big ridge of high pressure. You see that breakdown for today's system moving through there. And as we go on into... On into Friday, you'll see the ridge kind of break down and we're kind of under this influence where we're going to get some clouds and that precipitation moving through Friday night. And this atmospheric river is really going to set up over us on through the day, Saturday into Sunday. As you can see, this troughing kind of overtake the region here and then slide off to the east here going on through next week. Transient ridge builds and then another trough. So you can see the storm train is still on tap here. The La Nina winter continues as a deep trough builds over the west coast here on into the future. And here's taking a look at the atmospheric river. I wanted to put this into motion here. You can see here it comes there on and through Saturday, on and through Sunday. It is just a category one, but it is going to bring us a couple rainy days here going on through Saturday and Sunday, it looks like. And then as we put this into motion, you can see this troughing kind of open up, but no atmospheric river at that point. 
So this is temperature at 10,000 feet, 700 millibars. If I put this into motion here, you can see this cooler air kind of clip the region there. And then as we go on into next week, I wanted to show you some of these lobes of cold air moving through the region here. Check out this one. This would be behind a powerful frontal system. We go on through next Tuesday into Wednesday morning. That cold air moves across the region there. And that would bring our thunderstorm potential here with any kind of scenario similar to this. So we'll watch out for this one. As you can see, this cold air kind of dive down and build this troughing over the west on into the extended so we'll see how that works out but it looks like their weather is going to continue to be active here going up through the next week or so and this is let's do last night's gfs run here since this morning's is not completed it's loading yet and if we put this into motion here you can see this precip approaching us friday night into saturday morning and the GFS does show kind of an atmospheric river, but it does lift that warm front more quickly. So much, I don't even know if that would qualify as an atmospheric river according, according to the GFS there. As a much deeper low dives down into California there, as you can see the troughing up, open up over the west. And then you can see the frontal system reach us Wednesday. That is also weaker than what the European is showing under the future, much less cold air behind that. So there is model differences in the extended here. The GFS would bring some nicer weather probably on in the extended versus the European. So we'll watch how this develops. As you can see, another powerful system move across uh, out into the Great Plains and up towards the northeast here on in the extended but it is that time of year for severe weather. Look on it for next weekend, too. The, another system dies down over here for Oklahoma and Texas. This would be um, next Tuesday. Another powerful system. So the southeast is probably not done with its severe weather here. As you can see, the system track all the way down th towards Florida. Now here we're looking at Seattle Tacoma. This was last night's European run showing the temperatures. You can see we're fairly we're around normal here, but you can see a few days below a little bit below normal as we might get a little bit of a warm day in between these systems here. You can see them, but generally temperatures around normal, I would say here coming up. And this is for Seattle Tacoma. This is the European. The last was the GFS, but you can see Kind of in front of that powerful front, we get a, a fairly warm day there on Tuesday, or relatively warm, at least during a La Nina year. But then you can see that colder air that would move in the area behind that for Wednesday and Thursday. And here's the precipitation. You can see today's light amounts, and you see a stronger system rolling through here early next week, and then potentially again midweek as we're unsettled as we continue on into the extended now here is wind, searching for any wind storms out there. Not really showing many signs of it, way off in the extended maybe, but no big winds expected. And we are rapidly approaching the end of windstorm season. After about mid-April, the big windstorms usually cut off pretty drastically, although historically we have got a couple into late April. But generally May, June, and July, we do not get windstorms around here. Very rarely in August and September. Uh, September it starts picking up a little bit, but once we get into October, it comes back around again. But we are rapidly approaching the end of windstorm season here in the Pacific Northwest. Now here's looking, the top one here is at 18,000 feet temperatures. You can kind of see these, uh, these dips as these systems move through here. You can see the one early next week and then the one behind that. Maybe some thunderstorm potential with one of these two systems or even both. And you can see 850 millibar temperatures at 5,000 feet. We're generally pretty chilly air is still hanging around on the extended here of the European model. So that's why our weather is going to maintain its active nature on in through next week. And these are the soundings. These are basically normal. This gray line is normal. This is 5,000 foot temperature here for Quileute, Washington. You can kind of see how as we get into April, things start to warm up. And that cold air aloft really stops getting in here. Uh, nearly as much you can see we start we get this cold air aloft through here and about through the end of april and start to get that uptick there as we hit summer you know we're much warmer aloft then you can see it drop back down as we go into fall and winter and this blue line here represents the extreme cold air so you can see once you get into mid late november you can get arctic intrusions but they're they're pretty rare still into november you can see them as they go into december and january and you can see how they kind of cut off after february even though we do get some ch pretty chilly air in through early march you can see that warm up occurring that matches up with the normal temperatures and the red line up here would would mean record high temperatures at 5,000 feet for the soundings there out of Quileute. 
So yeah, um, light rain today. Enjoy tomorrow. Looks like it might be a dry day. Then precip looks like it might be back for at least Washington for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oregon might get another dry day Friday. We'll have to see how that goes. I'll do another video tomorrow probably. But this troughing out here might give that dry day tomorrow. But then another atmospheric river looks like it's coming in Saturday night and on in through Sunday. And then more systems through next week. So we'll look for thunderstorm potential with that in tomorrow's video as well. So hope you guys are having a good day. Um, enjoy that rainfall. I know there's a lot of people out here who love the rain. They love the clouds and the cooler weather. So enjoy that if you like it. And we continue to drift through this La Nina spring, getting these mainly cooler days. That's why yesterday was such a nice day. We got up to the mid 60s and it was really glorious yesterday in that sunshine. So Hope you guys are enjoying the weather that we're getting and we'll talk about this a little more tomorrow and look for that thunderstorm threat next week. So I'll talk to you guys there.